another common use of social media is for customer service. And in fact, it's interesting. I feel like some of the first companies to really jump on us, some of the first industries were industries that had a lot of problems with customer service, such as the airline industry, the rental car industry, a lot of transportation industry. Uh, and they got really good at just responding to requ- uh, uh, re- statements that mentioned their company's names on Twitter, on Facebook, and things like that, right, um, when they could. Um, so in Twitter, for instance, and here's a great example, this is uh, JetBlue, right, and um, the, you know, a, a particular customer on JetBlue flight, on a four-hour flight, is complaining that uh, you know their TV just doesn't work, so they don't have anything to watch. Um, JetBlue is famous for having you know a lot of good the uh, direct TV and other content on their flights, right? Uh, and so they're upset about that, right? And JetBlue responds almost immediately, fairly quickly thereafter, um, saying that oh, that's not what we like to see. Are all the TVs, or is it just yours? And the user replies, "It's just mine. Um, everyone else is working, right?" Um, and JetBlue says, we hate that it happens since the DM with your confirmation code and we'll give you a credit, right? So they're going to they're gonna give them some sort of, um, you know, gift certificate or credit for the flight, right? Uh, and, you know, it responded, it resulted in just a few minutes later, the, um, the customer responding. That's one of the fastest and best examples of customer service I've ever had, right? Uh, and so this is a great example of how you can use customer service in, in an ongoing way. Uh, use social media for customer service in an ongoing way to kind of respond uh, to comments and questions that your um, customers have. Another use is the informational use, right? And so this works really well uh, for either companies that provide tools that can be used in multiple different ways or provide very complex tools, right? So in this particular case, I'm talking about Lowe's, but you can also think about uh, a firm, for instance, that had the selling a high-tech device that might be a little bit confusing to use, right? Or a B2B company, right? That might be, that might not be clear how you would use all their services, right? And so they can provide different videos. So Lowe's has a channel on YouTube where they provide a bunch of different ways uh, to, for home improvement with, you know, and there's nothing, you don't have to go and purchase these things from Lowe's, but obviously they're going to give you the links and the clues that, that for the different things that might work, right? And so in this case, the, the, the main video that was published six days ago, apparently, uh, is how to build an in-ground fire pit, right? And it takes you through step by step how to build it. Um, and what's interesting is that it can also be used um, as kind of a forum to provide content to your users back. So on this video, there was a comment that says, not sure, but my expedite says that fire the fire would crack uh, the cinder blocks, right? Um, and Lowe's responded right away saying, hey, you know what? Um, the standard concrete blocks are fire resistant. That said, we don't recommend allowing the fire to burn directly on the blocks for an extended period of time, right? Uh, so it's a great way that they can kind of resolve any potential questions and issues. They leave the video open for um, comments and, and questions, uh, and they can get a kind of access to it that way. Really builds kind of a thought leadership for the firm, right, and really identifies them as being able to provide the answers in the space. Reputation management. So I, I gave a couple examples in, in, in uh, other videos about positive examples of reputation management, like Taco Bell monitoring uh, for content and things like that. Uh, but I want to talk a little bit about some uh, negative examples here. And what I mean by that is examples where companies probably could have been doing a better example of uh, online monitoring uh, for reputation management and they weren't, right? Uh, so probably one of the classic examples that almost every uh, digital marketing person talks about when they talk about social media is United Breaks Guitar. So um, this was a, um, a guitarist, an, an artist in a band, he was traveling, um, and he overheard someone say, hey, look out there, they're throwing guitars around. And sure enough, he looked out there and saw that they were throwing guitars around. He gets land um, at his destination, goes to get his guitar and sure enough it's broken and United claims they won't um, they won't refund the full value because of the limited liability they, of, of how much they have, right? So this YouTube video, so he, write, he goes home, he writes a song about it, he then records that song, a song called United Breaks Guitars, <laughs> uh, and then goes and posts it uh, online and it 
it goes it goes viral really quickly. It was posted on July 6, 2009. It amassed 150,000 video views within one day. Uh, that actually immediately United called trying to right the wrong. Um, and in fact, it seems that this may have had a, at least a temporary negative effect on United stock price. The um, on July 6, the United Airlines opened at about three dollars and thirty one cents. Uh, but it went down as low as three dollars and seven cents at a seven and a half percent drop the next day, and it seems mainly attributable to this. But you know, stock price is always a complex thing to figure out. So, um, so clearly, this could have a positive effect, or sorry, a negative effect as well as a positive effect on uh, things like stock prices, right? Um, another example, and so it's important to be monitoring these things. Another example is um, a. Um, mother blogger who basically writes about a lot of her experiences named Heather B. Armstrong. Um, she buys a $1,300 Maytag washing machine. Uh, it doesn't work, so she uh, calls up the repairs and they come out, but they don't have the parts, so they come back out again. And, you know, she's a mom, she has a kid who's, you know, they have, they have diaper issues, they have other issues going on, right? And so she's, she's just getting fed up with how long this is taking to repair. Eventually, she's told, she asked Maytag to just replace it. Maytag says, no, he has to visit three times. Uh, she says he has to visit three times, and, and they say, no, 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 wait. We mean he has to repair the machine three times. Uh, but but they, they'd only visited actually once, because, or only repaired the machine once because um, the, the missing parts and things like that. Um, she then tells Maytag, I'm going to tweet about this, and I have you know a million followers on Twitter. And she is told by the Maytag representative, um, Twitter, I know what Twitter is, but Twitter doesn't matter in this case, right? So uh, she can't get, she can't get any fix. So she goes off, she tweets, I have the, the three tweets that she has, right? Do not ever buy a Maytag. Um, have I mentioned my nightmare experience? Don't buy it. It's still broken. They've tried to fix it three times and it hasn't worked, right? Um, eventually, um, Maytag's um, handle, by the way, was not very used at this time. It only had like six or seven tweets. Um, eventually, a couple of them come to Heather asking for her contact information. She eventually gets a call and they fix it, right? Um, so it resolves positively in the end in this context, but not before Maytag has a fairly negative experience. Uh, interestingly enough, and this is a great example of how you can use reputation management to monitor the reputation of your competitors, Bosch, a competing washer manufacturer, emailed her as well shortly around the same time, offered to give her a washer uh, to if she would get rid of her Maytag and talk positively about it. Basically, or not, they weren't quick pro to talk positively, but you know, with the idea that she would probably talk positively about Bosch. She wound up not accepting that because Maytag wound up fishing, fixing hers. But she talked to Bosch and got them to donate a washer to the rescue mission of Salt Lake in the name in her name. Um, as a result of that, Bosch gets good uh, PR, right? So this is an example of how you can actually use other companies, your competitors' companies, um, bad uh, instances on on social media for your own good, right? Bosch did a great thing there, being on top of that and getting and getting. Finally, you can actually use social media to drive um, customers to your brand in other ways, right? So on the left here, I have an example um, uh, of uh, a search for restaurants in Raleigh. And as you notice, the first thing that shows up, uh, one of the first things, is actually a Twitter search for that, right? So the Twitter content is out there right away. All these happen to not actually be the restaurants themselves. They happen to be people talking about restaurants, right? But it's a great example of how earned social media content can really help you drive people to your website, right? And drive content to your website, right? Um, this is an example where this is an own social media. So if you search for best screen size HDTV, one of the first things that comes up is actually a blog from Crutchfield, uh, which is a... Um, a TV retail store, right? Um, an electronics retail store, um, they, discussing what kinds of screen size you should choose for your room, right? And so this is a great example of how you can use this to drive people to your website, drive content to your website. It's one of the reasons why blogging is really powerful, as I mentioned earlier. Okay, let's pause there.